Hello everybody and welcome to Amphi Reviews. Today we're doing another Hong Kong review for Eureka's Lineup from June. I uh, previously did a PTU giant toe film, really interesting isolated crime drama. Very surprising film, not your typical kind of Hong Kong movie. Now we go to the other end of the extreme with Samo Hong's Spooky Encounters. Uh, very um, weird film to say the least. Let's dive into Spooky Encounters on Eureka Release. <laughs> Encounters of a Spooky Calm was released in 1980. It is directed by Samuel Hong, it is written by Samuel Hong, it is produced by Samuel Hong, and it is starring Samuel Hong. Uh, a more round kind of horror comedy, hopping vampires, supernatural, sorcery, uh, weird kind of, you know, voodoo kind of fighting in that sense. Just a really strange film and not kind of out the norm from Samuel Hong's kind of career lineup in a sense. Samuel Hong is a very interesting kind of performer, director, writer, producer, stunt coordinator. I, I really like Samuel Hong's work and I've really appreciated him more and more as I've watched more of his films. You know, obviously got introduction to him in the uh, Jackie Chan films and he's very similar to Jackie Chan in that sense of two people that have really kind of laid the foundation for their careers and what they want to do and what type of movies they want to do and they've definitely evolved and changed over each decade and type of films they want to make and well I think Samo is a bit more freeing to do what he wants in a sense he don't think he has the restrictions of a kind of western kind of star where like Jackie Chan was more kind of the next Bruce Lee and everyone was trying to make him the next big international Hong Kong star you know doing American movies and you know having that kind of reputation and you know doing kind of very specific projects kind of thing. Samo Hong kind of dipped his toe into that kind of western market but never really kind of laid there kind of since he was very comfortable with the films he was making and he was doing a lot of range of different types of movies obviously a lot of collaboration with uh, uh, Jackie Chan kind of thing and doing a lot of kind of traditional martial arts films doing some kind of different ones there Eastern Condors is kind of you know Vietnam kind of crazy kind of war movie and obviously now doing Encounter the Spooky Kind a horror comedy one of the first proper of its kind during that kind of time and obviously the 1980s is the perfect kind of time for that kind of experimental kind of form Samuel Hong, I've noticed during the 80s of his kind of his time when he was doing movies for himself and with his own kind of crew and his own kind of you know actors that he felt more comfortable with, the, the quality is quite different. And the way I say it about this is when he's doing a film with Jackie Chan, when he's directing a film or when he's co-starring or working alongside with Jackie Chan or one of a big kind of star, you can tell there's a bit more of a collaborative effort to make it a bit more specific. Uh, you know, Dragons Forever, I think is an absolute fantastic film, but it's got that Samo Hong comedy in there. It's got that Samo Hong magic. It's got the Jackie Chan magic, it's got the One Beyond magic in there as well. It's a collaboration of different types of comedy and action styles and fighting. And you can tell that's a film they kind of really focused on. Let's make it for the audience, let's make it specific, and let's do a really, really good job. And you can tell that with the Meals on Wheels and Dragons Forever kind of thing, and so on and so forth. With when you get to the Lucky Star movies, for instance, they are straight up sex comedies and they're very kind of specific in taste. For me personally, I think they're a little dated. You know, I might have to rewatch them again, but they didn't really quite hold up for me well when I watched them. And the point I'm trying to say is with Samo Hong, he kind of is very freeing to do what type of movie he wants to do. Encounter the Spook kind of is no different, and this is definitely a film where he is tapping into a subgenre of movies uh, during the kind of 80s and late 70s kind of thing that people wanted to see more in Hong Kong cinema. You know, reading the booklet and doing my research, the kind of late 70s was kind of booming with that kind of supernatural spirit demons kind of movies with Black Magic, Black Magic 2. People wanted to see more kind of strange kind of sorcery type movies, a bit more special effects, uh, more practical effects, more kind of creepy kind of ideas in kind of a traditional maybe Hong Kong movie. And you got that within the late kind of 70s and leading up to the 80s, kind of, especially within the 80s, it kind of exploded with a subgenre that's kind of born. And Encounters of a Spooky Kind, I think, really pushed the limits of the time that it could be done. And I think he did a pretty good job in the sense of presenting an introduction to that world. A high budget, big star cast of actors, you know, a great concept, a really pretty good story overall, and delivered essentially during that time a horror comedy 
that could work both box office wise and create a need that people wanted to see. You know, he created this sort of a hopping vampire kind of genre, you know, as far as I know kind of thing. If this was done beforehand, I'm not too sure. But, you know, he essentially brought new life into kind of horror comedy and just horror in general to the kind of Hong Kong cinema. And obviously from this point onwards, you had uh, multiple copies, multiple kind of other directors, and obviously later on doing Mr. Vampire, which he kind of produced later on. You know, that film also uh, is really crazy, kind of thing, Hopping Vampires, lots of crazy kind of practical effects, 80s, you know, Zoom, and obviously Zulu Warriors was even further insane, doing kind of these kind of crazy kind of special effects and horror creatures, and you know, you can tell the studios and directors and, you know, uh, actors really wanted to get involved with these kind of big production kind of movies, because that was the way that, you know, Hong Kong was going, that's the way Western market was going with the Evil Dead kind of thing and the slasher genre and more supernatural threats people wanted to see. Now, did Samuel Hong fill the need for the kind of the subgenre during that time? Yes. Is the storyline pretty good, pretty interesting? Definitely for sure. I think it's a really fascinating story. It got some flaws? Absolutely. Is it a dated 80s film? 100% is the comedy all over the place. Yes, it is. Uh, Encounters of the Spooky Kind, for me personally, is not for me. Um, I didn't get much from it, if I'm being absolutely honest. While I was surprised more with the story, it is very similar to a film that, I think it's a Korean film called The Wailing, um, I think during at least in the early 2000s, 2005, 2006, I believe. And that is a very similar film to this, funny enough. I wonder if the inspiration was very kind of similar in that sense of, you know, that film also deals with kind of a, a kind of series of kind of genres, kind of, it's a bit of a comedy, it's a bit of a thriller, it's a bit of investigation, it's very heavy supernatural uh, you know, elements to that film. It's In Kansas, the Spooky Kind is directed, co-written and stars Sammo Hong, and you can definitely tell this is a 110% creatively Sammo Hong film. And I kind of love it for that, but it's also the downfall of the film for me also. <laughs> he plays a character called Big Guts, a character that has a reputation for having no fear. You can take on a challenge, a prank, whatever, for money, uh, for kind of free breakfast, for lunch, whatever, and people kind of challenging throughout the film. During the start of it, uh, you know, a bunch of friends basically do set up this kind of elaborate kind of scheme to kind of scare him. Hey, look, do this kind of peeling apple kind of challenge, and if you can do it without, you know, breaking the peel, then you, you know, you can win this bet, you can win some free lunch or something, and they kind of set him up to kind of fail and they do this really elaborate kind of scheme in this cabin and of course there is kind of supernatural kind of threats out there in the world. I think where this film is set is during the week of the ghost festival where spirits are a lot more kind of active, very similar to kind of Halloween in that sense. So kind of supernatural forces like possession or kind of hopping vampires or kind of other spirits are kind of very much active and can be exploited to the, the film's benefit. And that's exactly what happens in the film for sure. And obviously he's a character that is a bit down on his luck. He's someone who is very likable. Uh, I think for sure kind of thing, you know, the town village really don't really like him that much. He's a bit of a joke. His wife absolutely hates him. You know, he's sleeping around, she's doing some crazy stuff and she plays into the film quite a lot as well and um, one thing that's as a side note I think is always quite weird I found in most Hong Kong movies is that the women in Hong Kong movies are always usually really horrible or just kind of betrayed as either the love interest or the kind of the, the slot that kind of sleep around or the nagging person in that sense and both the women characters I noticed in this film are both wives and they're both nagging and they're both being accused of sleeping around. The story that the kind of the shopkeep rice owner has during the start of the film, he's telling a story about, you know, uh, his wife kind of decades ago slept with someone on top of a rice bowl or something and that's and she's coming at them, nagging at him saying, I'll, I'll give you something to talk about, I'll moan back and, and thing. And it's the same with Sam Hong's wife in the film. She's constantly moaning at him for not being wealthy, for not doing well kind of thing, and she's fed up and she's got a new nice dress and she's definitely doing things outside and she definitely escalates the film to a kind of a degree where it, most of what happens is because of her more or less and the kind of affair that that character is having Poor Samo Hung's character is just getting involved with it and is paying the consequences of being the happen to be the husband of the wife of that character, which is a damn shame. And of course, the wife's having an affair with this kind of emperor character, a very wealthy kind of man, someone who is well known and established in the, in the town. You know, funny enough, Samo Hong is the kind of driver of this character, kind of things, traveling around all across town. So, good relationship, but apparently, he's having lots of fun with his wife behind the scenes and he 
we're preparing to say can't just straight up kill him for some reason. He has to make it look a bit accidental or he vanishes or something. So he goes to this kind of an elaborate kind of overblown kind of scheme to hire a kind of sorcerer uh, to basically kill him in a sense. Lock him up in a kind of house with a hopping vampire. The guy is going to do some possession, you know, some kind of weird kind of rit ritual kind of voodoo kind of stuff. And I'm going to kill him that way through kind of supernatural means. And it just kind of really escalates from that point onwards where the character is trying to, over and over again to kill Samuel Hong in the most convoluted ways. And I'm surely thinking to myself, wouldn't a gun be so much easier? Wouldn't stabbing him, wouldn't paying a local peasant to go and kill him be so much easier than doing this a seriously expensive, elaborate kind of scheme of a sorcerer trying to kill him in a very specific way at a very specific time. It's so bizarre in its kind of execution. Uh, it just makes me laugh. I think the story for Encounter of the Spooky Kind is actually pretty solid. I actually was, I quite actually liked the story quite a lot for the most part. I think there's a couple of things you can iron out to improve upon, but the initial setup of just a husband character, someone who is just not really done anything wrong in that sense. He's just someone who was trying to make ends meet and who was being a, a pawn of someone else's affair you know, and being tortured by supernatural means is actually a pretty good concept. And I can see why it could work for a horror comedy that kind of set up because he's someone who's a bit clumsy, he's someone who doesn't know what's going on and his facial reactions and his body language definitely is quite funny. But I think it wears off really quickly. You know, I think the initial initial setup itself, I think the initial kind of first interaction with the hopping vampire in that house, you know, the, the ludicrous kind of another bet he kind of gets offered. And the film is really trying to find that line between horror and comedy. And I think sometimes it works and sometimes it really doesn't. I think the initial setup with the hopping vampire, him locked in the house, I think is pretty well done. I think it's really funny. I like the kind of the music and these over exaggeration and the, and the facial reactions and the kind of trying to dodge the kind of attacks and the sort of mini fights and him hiding a top hill on the bottom and you know later on where the, the kind of the apprentice character is someone who is going against the master who is doing this you know killing this innocent man kind of thing he's getting involved and i think the point of you know the story beats kind of thing is quite interesting i, I like where it's kind of going but i think the the interest and the i think the horror interest the comedy interest and the story is kind of slows down quite drastically as it goes along kind of thing. I think the first 35 minutes is pretty solid, you know, in terms of the introduction to the character, in terms of showing the kind of supernatural presence of that we kind of thing with being like a ghost kind of festival type thing. You know, the introduction of the sorcerer is very interesting. I like his setup with his kind of, his drinking his water and his sweating kind of thing. And the hopping vampire plays a quite an interesting part to it. Sam Hong's character is very likable and I'm very invested in him. I like the constant back and forth between the master and apprentice who is going against him kind of thing classic versus evil kind of thing but it just kind of runs out of steam very quickly after that kind of point onwards and you know it kind of drags its knuckles along the ground a little bit it kind of escalates to like oh he's a murderer now kind of thing and then it's just kind of going through the motions and i think when his comedy and his horror works really well it really hits when it doesn't when it kind of falls flat or it's overextended or it's going on for a bit too long or the joke's going on for too long you can really feel it. There's a scene where he's kind of like sleeping and the kind of this other kind of hopping vampire zombie thing is like mimicking his moves. You know, he's pissing when he's pissing, he's kind of copying him exactly and it's fine for like, you know, a minute and then it kind of carries on, carries on. It reminds me of that kind of scary movie kind of comedy, you know, and it works to some degree, but then for me, it just kind of falls off and kind of gets a bit of a slog and then kind of picks up for that third act, which is exactly what I thought he would do, with kind of more kind of crazy kind of special effects and more kind of crazy kind of sequences. But the comedy and the action and the kind of the fighting, and it's a bit, it gets a bit muddled towards the end. And that ending sequence with the wife, I mean, wow, that's that's really how you're gonna end a movie. That's definitely gonna be your clap of applause ending in the cinema. You know, take your girlfriend to go and see that. Wow, um, <laughs> are you okay, Samuel Hong? Are you got you got something you want to say? Counts of a Spooky Kind is is an interesting looking through glass of Samuel Hong's kind of career. It's definitely another one of those movies where I can definitely go, yep, that's definitely a Samuel Hong film for sure. Um, it's well directed. I think the story is really interesting. Definitely being copied or imitated by other movies since then for sure. Um, I think the characters are really well handled apart from certain aspects, you know which ones. Uh, Summer Hong is great in the film, I think he's really fun. Even though he does go overboard, he does drag a little bit too much and I think there isn't quite enough 
horror elements to the film, if I'm being honest. I think the comedy is a little bit too reliant on the kind of the goofy nature, where I think he can be smart at times, but also it can be a bit too much at times. You know, it's definitely a film that has its place within the kind of 80s kind of subgenre. I appreciate it so much for sparking this kind of new wave of movies and kind of thing. It's very interesting to see the kind of the early kind of origin points of that. The Blu-ray from Eureka is a really nice uh, kind of snazzy addition for big fans of the kind of the franchise who like the movies. Definitely going to get a really good release here for sure. I really like the alternative artwork cover that. I think it's a really nice design. I like the, you know, some arms there kind of thing and the kind of the hopping vampire arms. It's great. I'll show you a bit more of the artwork there. This is a limited edition slipcase edition. So if you want to get it, get it soon. But I think it's a really nice kind of feels really nice kind of slipcase edition and these are a little bit, a bit bulkier than usual because you get the actual mini poster and it's actually a pretty sizable poster as you get in the film and it's great for someone who actually really, really loves it and wants to collect more kind of Hong Kong cinema posters and wants to display them. I've got quite a few out of my collection that I'm definitely going to be posting all over my kind of media room when I move um, in the next kind of year or so. Uh, that will be definitely be a really good video to kind of talk about when I actually do it. It's gonna be like a Hong Kong section kind of thing, really pumped for it. But uh, the great little posters you get with the price and there's a slipcase there of course and you get the same kind of artwork there. There's no uh, alternative slipcase or anything, there's no original artwork or anything in that sense but uh, I think the, this poster really sells the film quite well. And there's the back of it there, yeah. And you get the booklet and you get the Blu-ray. The booklet's really good as well because you get a lot of insight into kind of the supernatural kind of, you know, horror angle, horror comedy angle during the kind of late 70s, going into the 80s, what Samuel Hong did for the genre and what happened after the fact. Now the edition itself, you get a slipcase featuring brand new artwork, you get a reversible poster with the original artwork and the brand new one, so there's your kind of compromise there. You get a brand new 1080p presentation on Blu-ray with a brand new 2K scan, first time ever been released in the UK, which is great in terms of Blu-ray wise. You get all the classic kind of English dubs, you get the audio audio mix, the Cantonese, the kind of original audio language. You get a brand new feature length audio commentary, you get an archival interview to Samuel Hong, uh, alternative English opening and closing credits, still galleries, original Hong Kong trailer, and of course many of the kind of little features as well to kind of go into the film. And of course the booklet, which gives you more insight into the filmmaking of and what was going on during the time of making. That's been my review for Encounters of a Spooky Kind by Samuel Hong. Not one for me unfortunately, but I do appreciate it for what it did with the genre. And I look forward to seeing more of that kind of copying vampire craziness. There's one with Robocop Ripoff, there's uh, Mr. Vampire Teal I'd see at some point. There's quite a few other movies in that genre that I definitely are excited to see. And if they ever release them on Blu-ray or available access to them kind of thing, I definitely will be checking them out and I'm hoping there is a golden goose out there for one of them for sure. So what are your thoughts and opinions guys on the spooky encounters kind of experience? Uh, do you like the kind of hopping vampire kind of, you know, subgenre kind of movies? Which do you think is better? Do you think this is better or Mr. Vampire? Love to know your thoughts and opinions guys. Please comment down below. Uh, so in the meantime, it's Anthony Reviews, signing out.